Good morning and welcome to the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. We are glad that you are sharing this worship with us today. It is going to be the simpler form as uh, technically we're still on holidays. But please enjoy and hold these scriptures close to your own hearts. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and sent into our hearts the spirit of your Son. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that all people may know the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's reading is in chapter 45 of the book of Genesis, but the story has its roots in events that happened 20 years earlier, in chapter 37, part of which was the reading for last Sunday. That was when Joseph, the son of Jacob, was 17 years old. He had 11 older brothers who thought their father showed favoritism to his youngest son. His father had given him a multicolored jacket, and this, among other things, created jealousy in the brothers. Joseph was so despised by his brothers that at one time they considered murdering him. Instead, they sold him as a slave to a group of traders who were passing by. Not having been heard from for 20 years, Joseph makes a surprise appearance in front of his brothers. They can hardly believe their eyes or ears, and Joseph tells them who he is. Despite their bitter feelings about him 20 years earlier, they are delighted to see him and all is forgiven. The bad feelings of jealousy and hatred are immediately forgotten. During his 20 years in Egypt, Joseph became a ruler over that land and was in a position of great power. He invited his whole family to come to Egypt with him as there was lots of food there and they would avoid the famine that was coming to the land where, where they were now living. That is where today's reading begins. So let's listen. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him, and Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph whom you sold into Egypt. Now do not be so distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and the Lord of all his house, and ruler, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honoured in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with them. This has been the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From Paul's letter to the Romans. I ask, then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. 
And God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they may have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Then Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard you say that? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It's from Psalm 133, slated for today. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. Such true and deep words from the psalmist, yet not as easy to live into as evidenced by our scripture for this week. Joseph's kindred threw him in a pit to die and then gave him over to slavery. Paul states in Romans that kindred of God could lead to rejection. And the Canaanite woman is rejected because she belongs to a tribe outside the family belonging to Jesus. Our deepest feelings are usually reserved for those we consider our closest family and friends. And we know that anger among those we love dearest cuts the deepest. It's also a sad statistic that violence and abuse are usually linked to someone in a close relationship. I remember hearing Mother Teresa speak at the U of T Stadium. Government and civic leaders gathered around her on the stage, this petite woman surrounded by all these tall politicians. One of those politicians asked Mother Teresa what Canadians could do to help the poor of India. The tone of the offer 
was acknowledging the wealth of Canadians and our ability to address poverty in her country. Mother Teresa replied that there was nothing materially that Canadians could do for India, but Canadians could commit to building peace, starting with their own families. Such a simple truth to start building peace in our own family. Joseph rekindles that peace in his family and welcoming his brothers with open arms. We might find it difficult to forgive someone who tried to kill us or sell us into slavery, and no one, I think, would judge us. Joseph is speaking from a particular strength, and it gives him the courage to reunite his family. His center is the recognition that despite the violence and hardship in his life, Joseph has felt the presence of God, guiding him to a purpose beyond himself and beyond even his family. And Joseph is saying this in front of the Egyptians and the household of Pharaoh. He is giving a powerful sign to Egyptian leadership that real power lies not in exploitation or greed, but rather that peace and prosperity come from reconciliation. So not only has Joseph's personal family come back together, a wider family is given recognition. Again, scripture is reminding us that God's family has the intention for all people, for all nations, being one. The kindred celebrated by the psalmist is really all God's people reunited. We may never realize that dream. We may not realize it in our lifetime, but just like Joseph's dream, we commit ourselves to God's vision for all humanity. In the Gospel of Matthew, it appears that Jesus himself is contradicting such a universal vision of humanity when he rejects the Canaanite woman. It seems to echo a common sentiment that family comes first to the exclusion of those who are considered other. Maybe we make the other, those who don't share our faith or our values, make the other people in countries vastly different from our own. And probably too commonly make the other who is a different race, sexual orientation, gender, or creed. I think when Jesus quotes that he has been sent to the lost sheep of Israel, he is echoing a common belief system in Matthew's community. The woman breaks through with a voice of courage to challenge Jesus directly about that belief system. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. When Jesus says her faith is great and her daughter is healed instantly, a new precedent is established for all people and all time. Now the family line of Jesus has been extended beyond Israel. The Canaanite woman is still a Canaanite. And her faith is her faith, but she has included Jesus, and Jesus has included her. The disciples didn't think twice in rejecting the woman, even though she was crying for mercy for her tormented daughter. Who does that? Jesus changes his mind so that the disciples will change their minds moving forward. And this scripture reminds us that we too need to challenge our own understanding of who belongs in our family. How many young people have been cast away by their parents because they interpret scripture as excluding their children's sexuality? How many good Christian folk have justified slavery using scripture? 
Even a hundred years ago, a priest couldn't be a priest if he had a physical disability. And seemingly in some sectors, women are excluded from the priesthood for reasons of scripture and tradition. Who is our family? Whom are we bound to? And where do we draw a line in the sand of faith? Beyond our faith, when we are Beyond our faith, when our voices are needed to confront the exclusion of people for unrighteous and unjust reasons, where are we? We ignore poverty because there by the grace of God we need not go. Or stand by when a person of color tries to cash a check and is rejected or worse, reported to the police. Or reject immigrant and refugee benefits because Canadians come first as family. We acknowledge in words the rights to the land, but act in ways that destroy indigenous culture and ignore treaties. Paul recognizes that all people fall away from doing what is right and just, but God does not reject us. Why should we ever consider rejecting others if God treats all people with such generosity of grace and spirit? When it comes to family, we need to draw the circle wide and wider still, to quote a hymn. Jesus offended the Pharisees, members of his family, and eventually embraced the faith of a foreign woman. Acting for justice and righteousness will always necessitate courage. And we may not see evidence of all people acting as one family, but we must never lose faith or give up trying. Let's begin with our own new family, the amalgamation of three church families and a visible outreach to our community. And please, for the grace of God, let our actions mirror our words and our convictions reflect the face of God. Amen. Let us pray. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of us, Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those you love now and forever.